Hello, my name is Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to be talking about the Women in Translation Month Readathon. Uh, Matthew and I are very excited to be hosting uh, the Women in Translation Month Readathon again this year. If you would like more information on the official Women in Translation Month uh, movement, website, etc. Check the description box. I will be sure to link all of those down below. Uh, Matthew has already posted the readathon announcement video and his TBR video. I will also link those down below so you can go check them out. But little info on the readathon. So the readathon focuses on women translation, preferably translated by women. And we have some prompts for you. And it goes from August 25th to the 31st. August ends on a Saturday this year, so it's like the last full week of August. Uh, from Sunday to Saturday, and it's midnight, your time zone. We're pretty chill about this readathon. You know, if you read one book by Women in Translation, you have succeeded at Women in Translation Month. The whole goal is to read more books by women in translation. So we have some prompts for you, and they're more like suggestions to help you uh, find what you want to read, but also encourage you to look for other different kinds of formats and options that you might have. So let's get into the prompts. So first up, we have a book that has the translator uh, on the cover of the book. Now, I made my TBR and then I went through them and realized I didn't have any that had the translator on the cover. So I went to my backlist TBR shelf. You can see it right there, right? And I found this book, which is a book I've been meaning to read for a long time. And that is the Big Green Tent by Ludmila Ulitskaya, translated by Polly Gannon. And it's the only book that I have that has the translator on the cover. How wild is that? So I've been wanting to read this ever since Autumn talked about this book on the Reading Woman podcast, I think our first year, second year podcasting. And so I've had the book hanging out since like 2015, <laughs> which is really sad. But at the same time, I think it's time. Uh, but she really enjoyed this. So this is definitely on my TBR. So the next prompt, prompt number two, is to read a book uh, that is in a untraditional format. So that is like an ebook, an audiobook, etc. And so I have a few options for you. So yes. So the first one I have is my text to speech format. So if you didn't know, there's a special place for those books that don't have audiobooks, and that is the buying the Kindle version and having your Kindle read you the text. Now I can't actually recommend this format. However, the book is amazing. So, um, but still, I am currently listening to my Kindle read me, Nagar Javadi's Disoriental, and the translator is Tina Cover. And so this book is by uh, a Iranian woman who moved to France and it's supposed to be amazing. It's won all of the things. It was a National Book Award finalist. It was a Lambda, I think, award winner. It, just, it has all of the things. And so we're going to be talking to Tina Cover uh, this weekend for Women in Translation Month on the Reading Women podcast. So that's what I'm currently reading right now. And I will say it's very good, very dense. Uh, but uh, yeah, I really wish they would have more audiobooks. And that's one of the things that we kind of wanted to point out or, you know, raise awareness for is that a lot of these books don't have audiobooks. And so uh, that means that people like me who can't read print at the moment, anyway, uh, I can't really read them. So I am really behind on reading my books in translation, but there are a few that have audiobooks. Like this book. So this is A Winter's Promise by uh, Crystal Debos, and this is translated by Hildegard Searle. And this is out from Europa, just like The Disoriental. And this one's on audio, I found it on Hoopla. And I also have the sequel on my TBR, uh, The Missing of Claire de Lune. Um, th these are translated from French, I believe. And every one of the brother's brother loves these. So I'm excited to finally be able to read them. And yes, I, I wanted to read fantasy. I'm really in a fantasy mood as you will discover here shortly when my July wrap up posts finally. Uh, but yeah, I'm just so excited for these. So the last prompt is to pick a book that there was a five year gap between the book being published in its original language and when it was translated. Uh, and so I have a few options for that here. So first up is Celestial Bodies by Joka L. Harthy, and this is translated by Marilyn Booth. They won the Man Booker International Prize in 2019 for this book. Uh, Counterpoint is publishing this in the U.S. later this fall, but I ordered my copy from Book Depository, and I'm very excited to read this one. I mean, uh, I've heard nothing but fabulous things about this book. 
Now, the next two options I have, but they're not translated by women, but I wanted to include them anyway because they're high up on my Women in Translation TBR. So the first one is Land of Love and Ruins by Agni Er, and I feel like I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Um, it's Icelandic. I've never read a book in Icelandic before, and I'm very thrilled to get this book and like be able to read literature from that country. I always think it's just a special time when you read a book from a country for the first time. And so this one won the, I think, European Union Prize for Literature, um, and it's translated by Philip Rotten. It just, I mean, look at that. Is it not, is it not cute? I think it's adorable. I just think it looks adorable and like, doesn't she look so cool? Like, I'm just, I think, you know, important things, important things about book, the author's photo. So the next one was recommended by Jacqueline over Six Minutes for Me and Russell over at Income Paper Blog, and that is The Memory Police by Ayoko Agawa. And this is translated by Steven Schneider. And this one I it was sent to me by from Pantheon, just thrilled because they've been talking about it so much. So all three of these were published in the original language and then more than five years has passed uh, when the English language translation came out. Um, obviously you don't have to read books in translation in English. I'm just reading in English. So the English translation came out. We're just talking in circles. Oh, hi Dylan. How's it going? Okay, so those are the three prompts. There are two bonus prompts, and my bonus prompt is to read Jhumpa Lahiri's In Other Words, which is translated by Anne Goldstein. This is, you know, Jhumpa Lahiri won all of the things, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna write a book in Italian. And then Elena Ferrante's translator is like, oh, I'll translate it for you. That's, I'm sure that's exactly how it happened. <laughs> but it's one of my favorite books uh, by Jhumpa Lahiri, just because I, I just admire her so much, and she is just, like a literary genius. I, I really want her to win the Nobel in the near future because she definitely deserves it. That's just, I'm just stating this now. <laughs> and Matthew's bonus prompt is to read The Girl Who Wrote Loneliness by Kyung Suk Shin, and that is translated by Ha Yoon Jung. And this is a book that he's been telling me, Kendra, you need to read this book. Kendra, you need to read this book. <laughs> so I am taking the hint and I have the audiobook out from Hoopla. So I am going to be reading that, being the wonderful co-host that I am, and I am very excited to read it. So I'm sure it is fabulous being that. I'm pretty sure it's like Matthew's favorite book of all time or something. So yes, that's what we're doing. So I have a few extra books that I want to talk about that have been on my Women in Translation TBR that I have been saving. And so let's just go through a few of those. So the first one is actually a book that Matthew picked out for me uh, last November when I was visiting New York. And this is Banana Yoshimoto's NP. And I believe that the audiobooks are available for this uh, author. And this is out from Grove Atlantic. I've also heard people recommend a lot of her other titles. So I've been looking forward to reading this author for the first time. So we'll see how the readathon goes. And this book is translated by Anne Sharif. One of my favorite authors in translation is Han Kang. She's translated by Deborah Smith, and this is the white book. Uh, the duo has won the Man Booker International Prize before, and her books, The Vegetarian and Human Acts, have been some of my favorites. And I prefer to read these books in print because I annotate them because Han Kang is just that good. So a book from Spiegel and Growl, May It Rest in Peace, is this book. This is The Way Through the Woods by Long Lit Woon. And this the subtitle says On Mushrooms and Morning. And this is translated by Barbara Haviland. And this is actually translated from Norwegian, but the author uh, is from, I believe, China. And she moved to Norway, fell in love with a Norwegian man, and then he passed away. So this is her memoir on grief, but also there's supposed to be a lot of nature writing because she's learning a lot about mushrooms at the time. And it sounds like a combination that wouldn't work, but I feel like it definitely could. I'm all here for memoirs and nature writing, so I hope it is fabulous as uh, it sounds. And this is a naked hardback, which again, I feel like all hardbacks really should be because this is just gorgeous. All right, so that is the prompts and my TBR for the Women in Translation Month Readathon. I will link our Twitter account down below, which is WIT Readathon. So 
pretty straightforward there. You can go find us at uh, Matthew Sharapa or me at Katie Winchester across the interwebs. And yeah, we're very excited about the readathon. So um, that's it from me. And I hope to see you during the Women in Translation Month readathon. All right. Bye, guys.